When it comes to crow or frog to handstand, we normally talk about how we learn that movement. And I've got lots of progressional videos on how to do that. So the stepping stones towards that movement. So it's all about using momentum. We take the head and shoulders down, the hips up, and we flick the body up into that overbalanced position that makes it much easier to push out to handstand. Now that we can do that back to wall, we can work slow eccentrics. So starting in the handstand, rolling the body down, finding the elbows, showing control, get better with the eccentric, work on progressing that to going back up. But today, let's forget that. I'll put a link in the description below and at the end of the video to those progressional videos. But let's today focus on making the movement much harder. How do we progress the crow or frog to handstand beyond that one I just showed you? Number one, we could add repetitions. So if I have this already and I can go up and I can come back down and land again, I could just go again. So I can go for max reps using exactly the same technique maybe starting to use a bit more speed as I get tired, and I can just see how many crow to handstands can I do. And you can even do that one if your balance isn't fantastic and you need the wall at the top, and you just go for reps using the wall, coming back down, going again, and just using the wall as much as you need to to fill the gaps on balance. Number two, we could reduce speed. So speed is gonna help us, especially if we're using that overbalance to help push us out of that position where we're falling into the handstand. But if we slow things down, obviously that's gonna increase the time under tension and also decrease the amount that the momentum is gonna help us. So if my normal speed is this, then I could just go half that speed. And then if that's easy, I could even look at pausing in certain positions before I push out. So my rep tempo is much, much slower. And that's good because I could target certain areas, especially if I'm working to something like a handstand push-up, I can work specific points on, the, on that range. Number three, I could change the depth. So how deep does the head go before I start to push up? So if we look at the standard version, most people are gonna be something like this in terms of their head distance away from the floor. But if I try and go deeper with the head, and now push up from here, it's a bigger push, needing a bit more strength and control, especially if I add it on the way down as well. I can even go to an extreme with that and raise the hands up, which allows my head to go to a deficit. So crow position, head comes lower than the hands, and then I push out there. I can even go back down, head lower than the hands, before getting back to that start position. And that's another great one if you're working towards things like deficit handstand push-ups, 90 degree handstand push-ups. Number four, we can look at how we use the legs. Now, if I go a single leg version, that's often seen as an easier variation of going up to handstand. So if I go here, take one leg, then the second leg, in some ways it is easier to do that than do two legs at the same time. It's not gonna be quite so heavy, but you could argue it's harder to coordinate. But I would definitely play with both double leg and single leg. But a definite harder variation is to not use the legs in any way at all. So I'm still mimicking the position, but notice now I'm not putting my knees down on to my elbows, both on the way up and the way down. Number five, I could go out before I go up. So a little bit more like a small or shortened version of the 90 degree handstand push-up. So my lever arms get longer before I go up. So out, then I go up Whoop. to handstand, try and do that on the way back down before coming back into the crow or frog position. So that's five different variations to make it harder. Now you can combine them. So I could pick any one of those and add more repetitions to them. I could slow the tempo down, put pauses in at any point in all the different variations. So there really is multiple different ways you can play with that movement. And it's especially good if you're targeting a specific calisthenic skill, whether it's planche related, handstand push-up related, or just making your balance window super big. It even works well to fill a lot of gaps in the yoga transitions when you're flowing between different poses. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions on this one. If you're after coaching or help with your training, check out my app. And my website links are down in the description. If you're still learning that crow to handstand, check out this video and I'll speak to you in the next one.